what's up guys I'm back I got a little lazy with the videos but we're back and this time we're not stopping I'm ready to push out some good paranormal content not just story reading but many other things that I'm not gonna tell you about just wait until the videos show up today or tonight we are going to read part two from the last video that I posted titled I'm haunted the guy who's been haunted his whole life yeah we're reading his part two and it will be linked below and I hope you guys are freaking ready for more content from me and also I have thought about the name I know that my channel name is not this my channel name is just my name and I did that for a reason but my subscribers my people my squad is gonna be mermaid gang because we all know that I am known for really being a mermaid we know this mermaid gang so that's what my subscribers are gonna be called mermaid gang if I ever do like full merch that's what it's gonna be so I hope you like it because that's what it is anyway let's jump into the video and you might want to grab a snack because it's kind of long okay I've had paranormal experiences all of my life part two before I continue with my personal night terrors, I wanted to take some time out to recount three stories told to me by close friends of mine in college. I think they set the stage pretty well for the events I experienced as well as share some common themes which I feel bring me closer to an answer to why this is happening. They also show that some of the events are not isolated and that other people have had strikingly similar experiences to mine. I believe these stories to be true because I've seen the terrified faces of those who they happened to firsthand as they recounted these events to me. I'm also beginning to think that sensitives can be identified by unnaturally watery eyes if this is indeed the real sixth sense type of phenomenon. As those who have told me their firsthand accounts all seem to have this reaction when speaking of their accounts. That's true. I've watched many people tell stories that happen to them like paranormal stories on youtube i feel like i say that word so weird paranormal i don't know um but their eyes be watering so that's true anyone can tell a scary story but it takes serious grit to walk someone through a horrifying encounter that you yourself don't understand even as the blood is draining from your face while you tell it i hope these posts make others more willing to tell their stories especially the ones they're most afraid of number seven caesar is that you here's one from my friend tony i'll try to explain it from his point of view as he told it to me when i was younger i lived in a house in queens it was a decent sized place one of those century old houses with great crown molding and a real rustic feel i come from a very religious family and this isn't my only experience with he paused briefly before shaking his head and continuing spirits or whatever it seemed like whatever happened had a lasting chilling effect anyways i was 10 years old when it happened i woke up sometime in the middle of the night my mom was a nurse and worked late night shifts at the hospital so she wasn't home and my brother caesar who was much older than me had just started college at the time so he didn't live with us but occasionally he stopped by the house to grab something he paused again, staring at the floor. I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't sleep. So I went to grab some water from the kitchen. The way my house was set up was that the stairs from the second floor went down into the little hallway that connected to the kitchen. You would turn left at the end of the hallway to get to the sink. And from there, looking forward, you could see the doorway to our living room. There were street lamps outside that filtered through the kitchen windows so I didn't have to turn the lights on to see. Other than that, the rest of the house was mostly dark, but you could still make out the shapes of most of the furniture and stuff like the couch and the coffee table in my living room. 
I went down the stairs, grabbed a cup, and went to the sink. Before I even turned the sink on, I looked through the doorway to the living room and could see someone standing there in the dark, facing away from me. I started to freak out, thinking it was a burglar or something, so I grabbed a kitchen knife. I calmed down a bit as I realized it might just be my brother. So I called out, Caesar, is that you? The shadowy figure turned to face me. It had glowing red eyes and stared straight at me. I bugged the fuck out. Yes, Tony, it's me, Caesar, it said. Exactly in my brother's voice. <laughs> but I knew it wasn't my brother. All of a sudden it rushed towards me, floating over the coffee table like it just went through it. That's when I knew it wasn't a person, but a demon. I raced up the stairs to my mom's room where she had a bunch of candles and a statue of the Virgin Mary. I locked the door, lit a candle, fell to my knees, and just kept praying. I was crying so hard, I was basically screaming my prayers. I did this for what seemed like 20 minutes, just yelling my prayers through tears. I eventually stopped yelling but kept praying and lit all of the candles around the statues because I was too afraid to go near the door and turn on the light. I sat there on the floor praying, facing the statue of Virgin Mary who was protecting me and eventually I fell asleep. When my mom got home from work at like 6 in the morning, she woke me up and scolded me for lighting a bunch of candles while she wasn't home. Typical Spanish mom shit. She asked me what happened and I started crying again explaining it to her. She hugged me and told me to calm down and to remember that Jesus and the Virgin Mary will always protect us from danger. And they always have. Number 8. Wrong floor. In one of my film classes third year, a professor assigned a project in which we created short documentaries. One team of students chose New York hauntings as the topic for their film and they interviewed several people who had ghost encounters, including a student from our class, Otto. This is his story. When Otto was young, his family lived in a ratty old apartment building in Brooklyn. It was known for dangerous gang violence in and around the building, which included murders, burglary, and all kinds of horrible things. Otto said his mom made him carry a knife from the time he was seven, and he was not allowed to take the elevator to any floor other than the one his family lived on. To make things worse, the sixth floor of his building was supposedly haunted. There was talk of a bag lady who was caught in the crossfire between two gang members trying to shoot each other. She died on the floor of the hallway. There had also been a home invasion years back, gang related, and two people were killed. Otto lived on the eighth floor, and he thought about the murders every now and then when he was in the elevator. One day when Otto was around 13 years old, he had just gotten out of school and walked into his building. He got in the elevator alone, which was good because his mom told him not to get in the elevator with strangers. On his way up, the elevator jerked suddenly and stopped on the sixth floor. The doors opened and no one was there. He clicked the door close button, but nothing happened. Thinking that the old elevator was just broken, Otto decided he would just take the stairs up to the next, up the next two levels. The stairs were located at the opposite end of the hallway. Otto said that the second he stepped out of the elevator, he knew something was horribly wrong. He immediately felt eyes on him. He walked down a few feet, but the presence he felt overwhelmed him with pure and utter fear. He turned around and what he saw paralyzed him. Just to the side of the elevator was a shadow person, almost eight feet tall, all black, almost made of smoke, and as soon as he looked at it, it let out an inhuman roar and began chasing him. Screaming and crying, 13-year-old Otto bolted down the hallway, looking back to see the thing still chasing him and getting closer. He threw open the door to the stairwell, ascended to his floor, burst through another door, and ran screaming in his, into his apartment. His mom ran to him when he came in. He was hysterical, screaming and crying, mumbling incessantly because he was completely terrified. Suddenly, he fainted. When he awoke, his mother asked him to explain what happened. He told her everything, and her eyes went wide with fear. While she believed it was a malevolent spirit, Otto's mom took him to a doctor just to make sure he was okay. Otto's mom explained to the doctor what happened, and at first the doctor simply blamed the kid's overreactive imagination. That's when Otto's mom said something he would never forget. She told that doctor that when Otto ran into the apartment screaming and crying, he was speaking in Latin. Mm. Number 9. Where's Veronica? 
This story comes from a friend of mine I met freshman year. She and a bunch of other high school girls were having a slumber party one night in late 2007 to celebrate their friend Jessica's birthday. One of the girls, named Veronica, had only recently moved to the area and quickly became friends with Jessica along with many of the girls in her class. She was kind, quiet, and a little weird, but nothing out of the ordinary. And as it was October, the girls had planned to watch a bunch of horror movies and freak themselves out. However, just before they got started, one of Jessica's friends named Amber pulled out a Ouija board from her backpack. I just never freaking learn, do you? You just never learn. When Veronica saw it, she immediately reacted in fear. Duh, Veronica's probably pretty smart. My friend gave me this game that lets you talk to evil spirits, Amber hissed excitedly, grabbing the party's attention. Who wants to play? Nobody beat. I don't know, said one of the girls, to which Amber replied. Oh, come on, it's not real. What are you scared? Of course, the group of young girls felt the typical high school peer pressure, and no one wanted to back down from the challenge. Still, the room was silent. I'm in, Jessica said, breaking the tension, and the other girls chimed in. The group headed to the basement, with Veronica following hesitantly. Once in the basement, they turned out all the lights and lit a single candle, which they placed on the table along with the Ouija board. The girls began to play the game, first saying the Ouija prayer to get the attention of nearby spirits. Veronica held hands with the other girls and whispered the prayer along with them. Soon, ancient spirits were telling the girls names of their crushes, that one of them would be prom queen, and other questions teenage girls would ask. One by one, the girls took turns asking for dating advice from the spirit world, until it got to Amber's turn. She asked a question that no one would ever ask. In fact, it was more like a dare. If the devil exists, show yourself, Amber said. Okay, that shit was dumb. That shit was dumb. 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 Veronica freaked out along with all the other girls who immediately began yelling at Amber. Why would you say that, one girl said. Another shouted. What the hell, Amber? The girls scared themselves so bad they called the game off and quickly ran upstairs to watch a movie instead. At some point during the movie, Veronica, who hadn't said a word since they played the game, got up to go to the bathroom. She returned shortly asking Jessica if there was another bathroom she could use, as the one on the first floor was occupied. There's one upstairs, but my parents are sleeping, so just use the one in the basement, Jessica replied. The rest of the girls continued to watch the movie 13 Ghosts or something like that. When the movie ended about 45 minutes later, one of the girls noticed Veronica's absence. Where's Veronica? Amber asked. She said she was going to use the bathroom downstairs. Has she still not come back yet? Jessica replied. A few of the girls began to giggle, saying that she was taking a long crap or something. Jessica told them to stop making fun of Veronica and headed down to the basement to check on her. When Jessica reached the bottom of the staircase, all of the lights in the basement were off except for the one coming from the bathroom. She stood there for a second and noticed what sounded like someone talking. Veronica? She called, but there was no response. Only a continued whispering coming from the direction of the bathroom. Jessica turned the corner and saw the bathroom door half open. With Veronica's legs hanging out, she freaked out that she may have fallen and gotten hurt. Jessica ran to the bathroom to see what happened. When she got to the door, she screamed violently in horror. The rest of the girls immediately ran, ran downstairs to see what was going on. Jessica immediately ran back through them, hysterical, and bolted up the stairs. Amber saw Veronica's legs sticking out from the bathroom door and heard the whispering. She walked over to the door and looked inside. Veronica was on the floor, speaking in some indiscernible language, while carving strange symbols into the wall in blood gushing from her broken fingernail. Her babbling began to turn into angry shouting in what Amber would later describe to the others as a man's voice. She reached down to tap Veronica to see if she could help her. In a second, Veronica curled her head backwards at an impossible angle over her shoulders to face Amber and exploded with a vicious, booming scream. Her eyes were wide open and completely white. All the girls screamed and ran upstairs. When they got there, Jessica was in hysterics trying to explain to her mom what was going on. Jessica's mom immediately called Veronica's mother, who broke down crying. Apparently, this had happened before. Several times, in fact, during Veronica's childhood. 
Her parents had even hired priests on two separate occasions to give Veronica exorcisms. Apparently, they weren't 100% effective. Note, for those of you who have seen the Netflix film Veronica, I don't believe the film is based on the same story. I only know that my friend told me this story years before the movie came out, which horrifies me. I'll also add that I don't believe this friend is sensitive, unlike the other two mentioned above, who seem to have a connection to the unseen. Veronica herself, on the other hand, well, you be the judge. More night visitors. So now that you've heard the three most chilling first-hand stories I've ever heard, let's jump into my next three stories. They're relatively short, but again, seem to share a common thread with the experiences I've had all my life, as well as the stories I mentioned above. Part 1. Shortly after the last incident at Buffalo, the skateboard ghost boy, I decided to transfer to a different school. Not because of my paranormal experiences, but because I felt I wasn't learning much from my professors, who were mostly grad students and didn't care much for teaching. After my first semester at the new school, I went back to my parents' house during summer vacation. My first night back, as if some sort of welcome, I woke up in the middle of the night to a shadowy figure standing next to my bed choking me. I was terrified for a second. Then I just stared back at the thing's black, featureless face in pure rage. It dissolved into thin air, like black TV static, and I could breathe again. I inhaled deeply and started coughing in a huge what the fuck moment. This one seems to be straight out of the sleep paralysis handbook, but I seriously don't know anymore. Part 2. I didn't have another encounter until just before my college graduation. I'd moved into a new apartment off campus at my new school, which was much nicer than my previous one. Since there was a Salvation Army across the street from our house, my roommate and I made a habit of going there every now and then to get weird stuff to decorate the new place with. One day I found this old wooden sailboat, hand carved from what looked like driftwood. I remember my roommate saying, whoa, that thing's definitely fucking haunted. And maybe he was right. Naturally, I decided to hang it in my bedroom. Of course you did. Whenever my lights were off and I saw it out of the corner of my eye, I could swear it became the silhouette of a large man in a trench coat. The shape of the sailboat formed the hooded head of a man, similar to this. It made me feel pretty off, but I kept telling myself it was just my imagination. I would only see the silhouette when I was lying on my side in bed, facing away from it, and over my shoulder it would look like someone standing there. A few days later was finals week, and I attempted to do two back-to-back all-nighters. The first one was fine, but on the second, I drank about three pots of coffee between 4 p.m. and midnight. I was wired, but in a bad way. I was literally shaking from the caffeine, but couldn't focus at all. Can't relate. I can drink all the freaking coffee I want, and I feel amazing. That might not be a good thing. Never mind. By midnight, I had written, thrown out, and rewritten about three pages of a six-page paper. I finally realized I needed to get a few hours of sleep or I would just waste more time writing an incoherent blabber. Turned off the light, got into bed, and passed out. Something to understand here is that the right side of my bed was pushed up against the wall. On the opposite wall, there was a window where a street lamp from outside shined in projecting light onto the wall next to my bed, even through the blinds. When I awoke, I was facing the illuminated wall. I assume it was around 3 or 4 in the morning, but I can't be sure. I heard my younger brother calling me from the hallway. John? He called. My bedroom door was partially open, and I could hear the door creak as he pushed it open to a stir. John, are you awake? Now, something you should know is that my brother has insomnia, and as a result, he has always been a night owl which became a big annoyance to me during high school. He would constantly come into my room really late at night and wake me up to tell me about something he saw on YouTube or some pointless BS that could definitely wait until morning. It pissed me off quite a bit. The first time I heard him call from the hallway, I immediately thought, oh, fuck me, of course he would do this on a night when I haven't slept in almost two days and when I have a huge final to finish tomorrow. I remember being so angry and I resolved to pretend to be asleep so that he would leave me alone. When I heard him slowly opening the door, I was even more angry, but closed my eyes so he would go away. I could hear and feel his footsteps on the carpet as he walked in and could feel him standing behind me. I even opened my eyes a little and saw his tall shadow on the wall in front of me, illuminated by the street lamp. He said something like, John, I know you're awake. Stop pretending to be asleep. Suddenly, something clicked like a lightning bolt in my brain. 
My brother did not live with me. He lived at home with my parents. You know, I was kind of wondering about that. This couldn't be him in my room. I was bugging the fuck out and began to drool and shake violently, almost like I was seizing. I tried to move, but I lost all muscle control. Then I heard low, deep laughter rumbling from behind me. This wasn't my brother. It was something sinister and evil. He stopped laughing and then whispered in a guttural tone, they're coming. Despite the drool and the uncontrollable violent body spasms, I squeezed my eyes shut and prayed impulsively like I'd never prayed before. The shaking stopped, I opened my eyes, and the shadow was gone. I'll never forget that night, and while I'd like to blame most of it on sleep paralysis caused by my caffeine-filled brain, something in my heart tells me it was real. I don't know if it was related, but I sold the damn wooden ship to my neighbor the next day, smooth sailing from there, until the next apartment. Part 3. I graduated, got a new job, and moved down to New York City. On the first night in my new apartment, I woke up to coughing, except it wasn't me. Bruh. My bed was next to a few large windows, so even though it was night, there was a good amount of light in my room coming from the floodlights on the neighboring complex. I opened my eyes looking up. Between my body and the window was a jet black silhouette of an old woman wearing what looks like a funeral gown. She had one of those finely knit veils over her face and she was coughing into her hand violently. A bit shocked but still in that freshly awoken stupor, I looked down to see that she was standing through my mattress and my face was at her hip level. She must have noticed me because as soon as I looked up, she turned her head and stared at me. No facial features, just jet black shadow face. She bent over and brought her featureless face right up to mine, then just hung there for a second. Freaking out, I blinked and she was gone. Three months ago, I moved into yet another new apartment. All is quiet. Well, I damn sure hope so. Dude! Not only do you already have these situations, you bring more into your life than what you have to experience. What is your problem? You, you need the 91st Psalm. You need some bad energy cleansing crystals. You need all the help you can get. Like what, what in the heck? That was so PG when I just said what the heck right there. Somebody said, yay, I look forward to reading more. And someone said, for the narrator's sake, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, me too, I hope not. Like, dude, I mean, it's a great story. They've been really great stories. Thoroughly enjoyed it. But I really hope you don't experience anything else. I really hope you can just live your life peacefully without all these extra things. You have a thing for shadow people, I see. That is just dark energy. And you just, you gotta cleanse it. You gotta cleanse it. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this story since this is the end of this particular one. Let me know what you thought. Um, I will have more content, paranormal, some things might not be paranormal, but mostly paranormal because that's what I'm into. Um, I have more content for you coming. I'll be posting regularly for real. And so make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn my notifications on. And please like this video. And actually, if you've made it through the whole video, leave a ghost emoji in the comments. That helps my channel. I want to build a big family a big creepy family so if you could leave a ghost emoji so that youtube will put my shit in the recommended i would appreciate it and other than that mermaid gang <laughs> love that um i'll be back soon hope you liked it and we out.